Hey guys, welcome back. Randy here with Landtech, and in this video, we're actually out here in this beautiful day out here in the range, and we are gonna be talking about how to zero an IR laser. So really, this is kind of geared towards doing stuff at night with night vision, which we'll get into later in the video. And in this video, we're gonna be using the Lantac LASF 14 and a half inch rifle that I've got with me here. It comes equipped with a Steiner D-Ball D2 infrared laser, as well as a one to six LPVO, which I'm really growing to like here. And of course, being a Lantac rifle, it comes with the enhanced bolt carrier group. So that's gonna make things nice and smooth for us and the ECT-1 trigger. So it's gonna make, you know, zeroing this and just kind of shooting things with our trigger work a, a lot easier as well. If you wanna give those products a, a check, you know, we've got a video on the EBCG as well as a video on the ECT-1 trigger. You can check those out on this channel as well. But specifically, we're talking about how to zero IR laser devices, much like this one, that have two basically beams. You have your visible beam and your infrared beam, and that they are co-aligned or slaved. So if you have a night vision device or a laser that is only visible or only IR, this isn't really kind of an instructional video for you, but this is just kind of a tips uh, things that I've learned over the years shooting a lot and a lot with night vision a lot with different lasers and stuff So this will just kind of help we're gonna go through kind of how to do it and kind of talk about some of the train of thoughts behind different approaches with zeroing with IR lasers and then we're gonna talk about kind of what I prefer is kind of like the shortcut method uh, which we'll get into later all right, before we get into how to zero an IR laser, we should probably talk about really what we're doing, right? So we're talking about the use of a laser to basically aim and shoot at targets under nods. So before we get into that, there are two main primary kind of approaches to zeroing with an IR laser. One of them, which we're gonna talk about is what a lot of people call kind of like a converging zero. And what they mean by that, uh, laser beams don't have an arc, right? They're just, just like a crosshair on a regular scope, like an LPVO or whatever, laser beams are straight, whereas bullets have an arc. They, they drop. They come out of the barrel and they drop, right? So you might pick a distance like 25 yards or whatever, and some people will say, okay, I'll zero my laser to my impact of the bullet, and they will converge. Well, after they converge, if you're familiar with shooting, what will happen is that now your impact will, will be on the other side of that, that zero point, right? And where that's a little bit difficult with zeroing an IR laser is that a lot of them, not all of them, there's more of them kind of becoming this way, but a lot of them, the actual diodes for where the, the IR and visible laser are, are offset from the bore axis. And what that means is when you're choosing a converging zero, essentially you've got your laser beam here and your drop here. And when they intersect, right, before they intersect, your impacts will be on the left. And then after they, at the point of zero, they will match. But then after they converge or intersect, your impacts will be on the right. So one of the downsides to that kind of approach is hitting targets at various distances when you're not sure what the range is. So it can kind of be difficult if that's your method of choice, if you're, especially if you're shooting game, if it's before your zero, then things are gonna act very differently than if it's after your zero, right? The next type of zero is what a lot of people might refer to, or at least what I refer to as a parallel zero, right? And that is basically zeroing your IR laser to your impact much like you would a scope. So you've got your bullet coming out of the bore and arcing, and then your laser, instead of converging to your impact at some known distance, you assign it so that your laser just say, stays straight and parallel to the drop of your bullet, right? So in a way, that allows your laser to behave much like a regular scope. If they're not gonna converge and you're gonna hit left or right. When we run scopes and optics and red dots, we're used to just kind of compensating vertically, right? Okay, I've gotta, I've gotta aim, you know, hold two mils, I gotta hold one mil or whatever, right? Depending on whatever your zero preferred distance is, if it's 50 yards or whatever, it's, it's, it's basically a game of whether you aim below or above, but it's in a straight line. Now, if you pick a laser that is center line with a bore, this is kind of a non-issue. Another way you can kind of compensate for that for people that run a parallel zero is you can actually cant your gun slightly so that when you rotate your gun a little bit, now your laser diodes are vertically over your bore. And that's how some people get away with that as well. 
Now what I like to do is kind of a hybrid method of both. So there are special targets you can get to zero, a parallel zero, you know, if you're running, and it, they're laser specific. So if you're running like a PEC-15 variant or, or something like that, what I like to do is kind of the simple and fast approach. So what we're gonna do, you start with basically zeroing your optic. That's the most important part of this whole procedure, really, is just zeroing your optic. So we're gonna start zeroing, but before we do, just a quick little note. If you didn't know, if you buy any bag from like Savior Equipment, uh, look inside the box. They actually do this pretty cool thing where they print a whole bunch of targets. So it looks like I've got Ipsic and a few other just cool targets that you can use to zero or if you're out at the range and you need some targets. So for you eco-friendly nerds, this is really cool because you could basically just set up your target. You don't have to spend some extra time, and extra money on buying targets. You get one in the box. So repurpose your box and there you go. All right, so now that this is zeroed and the light has dropped, we zeroed this at just a moderate 36 yard zero, just to try that out. The light has dropped low enough. What we're gonna do next is essentially, now that we can see this visible laser, right? We're now going to shine the visible laser at just like a target, maybe four or 500 yards away. And then we're just going to use the turret on the laser to adjust the laser pointer to line up with our zero on our optic. So while we're doing this, I'm trying to actually use my phone. I didn't bring like one of those scope shots that you could actually look through this and see, but I'm trying to do kind of a good idea. Maybe I'll pause the video here and give you an indicator of where the green dot was. So then we just kind of adjust the, the turrets and now the point of aim with the dot, uh, with, with the, the crosshairs in the scope, lines up with where our laser pointer is. And because the laser, the visible laser, is slaved with the IR laser, what that means is that is where our IR laser is also going to be pointing. So now we're gonna wait till it gets dark. I've got some steel set up over here and we're gonna start shooting it and then engage it at various distances. We'll move a couple hundred yards away. I'll go ahead and shine an IR light on it so that you can easily see it through the video. And then we will see how well we can engage steel now that this IR laser is zeroed and we're ready to go. So the sun's down low enough here, and you can kind of get an idea. This is the D2, right? Right. So this is whatever that is, 50 yards away-ish, right? So let's put this bag here. You get an idea of what we're kind of looking at. This is easy peasy, right? I'll just leave that on to make it easy for you guys. This is the illuminator. Focuses up really good and tight and really bright. It looks like we won't need that IR light right there that I have pointing at that. So we'll just send a few rounds. This is 50 yards. See how well that zero worked. Well, that's too easy. All right. If I was pointing at that rock right there, that's a black rock. That's too easy. So what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and move this thing back, right? I'll, I'll probably leave this steel here and we're just gonna walk back another 100 yards or whatever, or maybe another 50 yards and see how far we can engage this thing just using our 36 yard kind of dead nuts zero with the IR laser. All right, let's go. We zeroed the laser to the scope way over there, which is easily like five, 600 yards, right? And as you can see, even with the illuminator turned up all the way, right? And, and focused in, even though I can illuminate stuff over there, I wouldn't be able to shoot anything over there. Now, I could see a little bit more clearly through my eyeballs than you can see through the recording re resolution of this NVG recorder, but 
I mean, unless you'll see movement, like I've been out looking at coyotes and stuff, like you'll see movement, but even if it stopped, if you saw a human person, I mean, I mean, that's just really not realistic, right? This is why I say most of your IR laser illuminator pointer work is going to be like at most that distance. I think that rock area is about 300 right there. All right, let's move back. a lot easier. Got a trusty Tacoma. You're gonna you gotta try to get yourself some NVGs, Mike. Yeah I do. <laughs> yeah I do. Let's come over here. Let's try it right here. Go ahead and set that tripod down. Just just right where you're at. That's fine. Okay. Oh. Okay, so see how it kind of washes it out? It's a little bit difficult. Sometimes you dial this back. Actually, Mike, here's what I'm gonna have you do. Run down there for me. And there's that tripod. There's an IR light on that tripod. Can you run down there and turn it on? Shine it right on the steel, thank you, perfect. See, I can barely see him without illuminating him. Or if he's not moving, You'd never be able to see anything. So IDing a target, realistically, a threat this far, um, it starts getting unrealistic. All right, thank you, sir. All right, now that that's on, that can kind of help us, see? I can turn this down and we can clearly see when the dot is on that, that target, right? Safety's off, here we go. Too easy, right? We'll see if we can even shoot like just the head zone. Yeah, maybe a shot in the chest. Yep, heads up, headshot right there. So let's move back even further and kind of push the limits on this thing. So the ECT1 trigger and quality barrel is making this kind of easy, but we're a little further now, so. Let's give it a try. All right, there's that. Okay, laser on. See what I mean? My, my illuminator's barely doing anything out here at this wide. I could choke it all the way up. But it's easier to see that like that. All right, here we go. Another few, well, I mean, I'm guessing it's 300, maybe further. Too easy. All right, and again, if that was a target, like I will uh, tighten this beam up. I mean, you saw earlier when Mike was walking out there. If that's a target out at that far, it's just, I'm just not gonna see it. Unless it's moving, if it holds still, figuring out its outline. It's not like things walk around with an IR light pointing at them like that. So like it's just a little unrealistic. So that's zeroing the kind of super simple way. You just got to basically co-align your visible laser with your day optic at a really far distance and you're ready to go. It's essentially a parallel laser zero at this distance as it converges in dead on like way out there like at that distance so like it's it's pretty close all right guys so that's basically it so if you're wondering how to zero an ir laser just to kind of overview that again you basically just zero your scope get that good and zeroed for whatever zero preference you have for your your setup and your build and then as long as you're running a laser that has a visible laser that is slaved to your ir laser which i mean that's basically all lasers that offer both a visible and ir these days um, you basically wait till the light is low enough that you can see clearly through your day optic whatever that is red dot or lpvo or whatever and you can see the visible laser as well point at some arbitrary distance usually as far as you can kind of see them clearly four five six hundred yards and then just make the two dots touch it's really that simple you're just gonna use windage and elevation and move the the, the laser pointer till it touches and is in the same point of aim as your primary optic. Then you're ready to go. You're ready to rock and roll at nighttime and have some good times. If you guys like this video and you want to see more content like this, let me know in the comments and we will see you next time.